Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. I've got guys an update on this massive snowstorm that is about to ride right up into the northeastern U.S., and this is already starting to cause problems, and behind it, a second one, an even bigger one, is going to move across the eastern United States, and that one is definitely one to watch. All right, so thank you all for joining me here um, on this Thursday uh, night here. Alright, we're going to be talking about those two snowstorms that I just mentioned. One is actually currently visible on radar. This is that first one that's going to be moving up into the northeast, bringing a lot of snow into this region here. Alright, um, we can see it bringing a lot of snow into the upper elevations of New Mexico and into Colorado, and some snow is even seen into Texas there. Alright, but the front side of that system there is just some showers and thunderstorms that are moving their way across uh, northern Texas and then into Oklahoma. We're going to see the storm system continue to move uh, into the eastern, just farther off to the eastern U.S. into tonight, and then tomorrow this will be in the southeast. All right, and then by the weekend, we're going we're gonna to be uh, seeing the storm system begin to bring its impacts to the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. All right, other than that, you got not much going on. Some little piece of energy flying around in the Pacific Northwest, but that's not really going to do anything. It's not really going to affect our weather pattern here. So take a look at our current alerts. You can see things have changed. All right. I just want to mention first the Northeast. Look at this. We have winter storm watches already up in place for those areas that are expected to see the heaviest snow. All right. So I have figured out that this is pretty much for those areas that are, are by the models are shown to see at least uh, five inches of snow or, you know, just, you know, a lot of wintry mix. All right. So we could see that stretching all the way up from the far down east portion of Maine. We saw that, um, on that little band of snowfall that the models were showing in support of, uh, bring a lot of snow to Maine, just north of Boston. That's where it is. All right. This goes right through, uh, really all of central and western Massachusetts, all of Connecticut, Rhode Island, southern New England, down into southern Vermont, New Hampshire. And then we see uh, southern New York State not quite make it to New York City. It's very close to New York City right now, but it's not quite there. Parts of northern New Jersey are in this uh, winter storm watch, and then this goes down through central PA. All right, this does not make it to D.C. This does not make it to Philadelphia. That means that People at the uh, National Weather Service, the forecasters there, have less confidence that we're going to see the heavy snow or just accumulating snow in those areas. But that goes down through uh, the um, Appalachian Mountain, just off to the um, east of there. This goes through the upper elevations of Virginia and North Carolina. That's where we have that big winter storm watch. It's not uncommon to see winter storm watches issued, especially beforehand with the storm system because of this one being very strong for an area that hasn't seen a stone storm like this in quite a while. It's good that they're uh, issuing the watch in just a few days in advance. Um, but looking at the south central United States, we still have winter storm warnings up for northern New Mexico, and this is going into northern Texas. And one county out here, the far farthest to the west in the panhandle of Oklahoma. That's in this pink shade. That's where we have winter storm warnings. Surrounding areas in this purple shade going into Kansas and then eventually in Nebraska, we have uh, winter weather advisories. Same story in the western west. You got scattered winter storm warnings in uh, portions of southwestern uh, Oregon and then down into uh, the Sierras here, region of California and then surrounding areas. You have winter weather advisories in those pinks, by the way. Um, I forgot to mention, again, those are uh, winter storm warnings, all right? So moving on here to our NAM 3K model for the South Central United States. We're taking a look at what we could expect for the rest of tonight as we go into tomorrow. When will the system move out and what impacts will it bring? So we talked about, you know, the really all the, the impacts yesterday with all the actual totals for just the entire storm system this is just looking at, at what's going to be happening going forward because the storm system has already uh moved in at this point so this was a story 3 p.m today we had heavy snow very heavy snow at times moving through northern new mexico this is stretching into the panhandle of oklahoma some rain starting to change over snow into texas you got cold air nearby cold air aloft all right, this low is starting to move through, and here it comes. And we saw that band yesterday at the NAM was in support of, of bringing heavier snow and this more widespread snowfall. Well, that's actually increased, not the size of it, but just the intensity. We've seen, we're seeing a lot more very heavy snowfall 
um, up into uh, northern Texas. This is probably going to be the hardest hit area from this band of snow, but also into the like, Panhandle of Oklahoma, where we said that one uh, county that was f- on the far western side under that winter storm warning. This is why it's this band of snowfall. It's going to drop multiple inches of snow, um, and this continues throughout all of tonight. We're getting from I mean, this is from tonight to tomorrow, and by tomorrow, we're getting to you know, we're getting to late. We're, we're, we're getting to the late morning hours of tomorrow. This is starting to pull out, but we still have snowy conditions out there into northern Texas and Oklahoma. But this is going to last a long time, meaning that it's got a long time to drop a lot of snow. There's that midway point. Look at this. It's it's looking like a very weakening system, but you got storms starting to show up here on the southern side of the system into Texas, and then that Gulf flow starts to peak out right down there into the Gulf Coast of Texas. All right? Watch the system. This is its midway point, but watch as it re-strengthens like we saw yesterday as it moves farther off to the east. It breaks away from that northern piece of energy because that cold, the cold, dry air is kind of it's 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 moving down with the system, and then the low is taking the main portion of the system. Uh, basically, it's a switch here from taking a snowstorm. Uh, and then going to a line of thunderstorms. And this one could be pretty strong. All right, we see strong thunderstorms moving through Louisiana. This is definitely going to be a pretty loud night, all right, or a loud afternoon, I should say, tomorrow into Louisiana. This is the outlook for tomorrow. And then here it goes into Mississippi and Alabama. And so that's going to bring us to um, our snowfall totals, because at that point it would, the storm would be moving into the southeastern U.S. Snowfall totals for the south-central United States. All right, it's not looking that much, but there's definitely some significant snowfall totals out here. We're not seeing really any more uh, totals getting over a foot, but re- just remember that there is there are multiple inches of snow on the ground already. So when you add these totals, that gives you a lot of snow. And so you can see that band of snow the NAM was in support of. Well, here it is. It wants to drop eight inches of snow over portions of Texas to so six to eight inches in this pink shade. And that re-strengthening after the midway point of the system back here into Kansas and Oklahoma, I think that's a little overdone, but it's going for another 7, 8 inches of snow. And maybe somebody could get 9 inches here, as you can see. But everybody else is definitely seeing 2 to 4 inches. Some people getting a little bit above that, so maybe 5 inches. And by the way, we could see snow as far uh, east as... as uh, um, Arkansas. So, you know, you guys in Arkansas don't usually see snow this early, but I think it's possible you could get one to three inches of snow from the system. Back into New Mexico, we're probably going to see the highest totals here. More widespread. We're getting a little bit, we're getting a little bit closer to 10 inches. So more people are going to see 10 inches out here, but it's these tiny pockets letting you know that there's, these are mountainous regions, but the surrounding areas too, will definitely see multiple inches of snow. Now into Colorado, look at this. This is when the big numbers come out. Southwestern Colorado still going to be dealing with potentially over a foot of snow here. So let's say you guys have about half a foot of snow on the ground right now. Expect another foot of snow if you're in this tiny pink shade here. This is southern, uh, but off to the west here of Colorado. So you could be totaling up to about 20 inches of snow by the time the system is completely over. So very big system moving through. We'll even see more snow up into uh, the north central United States. We'll switch this over here. All right. Um, and here we go. We, we'll put this out. All right. And yeah, there, there's a big signal for very, uh, you know, very far north snowfall totals with this system. This is, remember, this is not a northern, uh, system, you know, if you want to put it that way, because we're going to see that Gulf flow start to switch with the system here. Um, but we still can see, you know, up to five inches of snow as far north as central Nebraska. All right. So I do think that there is a good chance that we're going to, someone's going to get around five, six inches of snow somewhere in this area. All right. Um, but the main, you know, the main focus is definitely farther south down here into northern Texas, uh, New Mexico, and then eventually into Colorado and then um, into Oklahoma. All right. So we now look at what's going to be happening with the southeast because, remember, we saw that line of thunderstorms begin to take over the system with that Gulf flow. Well, what happens to the southeast? Because you guys are right in line for that. Well, you may be wondering that, you know, if these storms are going to be severe. I don't think so. All right. They look pretty strong here to me. I think we're going to see strong to severe storms 
right now we have a level one out of five risk that hasn't changed so that's why i'm not showing you the current spc outlook um but that could quite possibly change with slight risk i really wouldn't be that concerned but because this is going to be a daytime severe thunderstorm risk it's not going to be that big but here we go it's you know it's nothing that you guys haven't handled just some very dark looking clouds that will roll through some rumbles of thunder some lightning maybe some strikes all right but it's really not going to be that bad other than just a typical thunderstorm that's going to be, be moving right through central louisiana with that gulf flow just off the coast there and then those storms roll right through mississippi this charges through and then overnight this becomes a uh, line of thunderstorms that could possibly bring damaging wind gusts that moves into alabama and then eventually into georgia and here we go that snow and wintry precipitation component to the system begins to form right by the cumberland plateau area maybe just off to the east of there but we can start to see some freezing rain some ice take over that rainfall um and eventually this is moving into the northeast but we see that low uh shift uh farther north it's really it's trying to trying to pull up that rainfall as much as it can but yeah, I think things should start to clear up as soon as late tomorrow night. Um, if you're off to the west here and back into Louisiana, all right, um, we can see, you know, this is pretty much halfway over um, already by mid-afternoon there in Louisiana. And that's going to move off to the rest of the southeast spring. More, you know, not unorganized uh, thunderstorms. That's going to be more of just showers and thunderstorms um, that will be impacting the rest of the southeastern states just before the system begins to move up into the northeast, all right? So that's going to take us to our next portion of the video. We're looking at the GFS model. We'll switch this to the northeast because I apologize. Did not switch that yet. We're going to be comparing the models like we always have for the system for the past five days or so. I've been tracking the system so much, all right? Um, so, if you were wondering what happened last night, well, the models did continue to tick north, and so now we're starting to see some areas even farther than we're seeing bigger snowfall totals. And, yeah, so this is coming up. This is uh, January 6th, which would be Saturday. All right, so this is Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. You've got snow rolling right through Indiana and into Ohio. You've got a lot of freezing rain and ice starting to come into Virginia and West Virginia and then eventually into North Carolina. That's a change on the GFS because, uh, remember, the GFS was showing that big band of very heavy snow, very wet, he uh, heavy snow into in between Virginia and West Virginia. Well, that's been changing to ice. But there we see it. It's not as big, but it, it's still there at 1 p.m. Saturday. As the system is moving up, notice how that low, it's still not off the coast yet. That tells you that it's running out of time to completely move out, all right, uh, and move out to sea. So, you know, that's definitely a sign that this is going to be bringing up all this warm air, you know, pretty much right in this direction. And that's going to lower those snowfall totals, but we're not there yet. All right, so we still have that freezing rain going up into portions of northern Virginia. You know, and if you're in very far northern Virginia, you're still going to hang on to snow, but this is going to quickly change over to rain. It's a very it's a very small system. It's not even looking that strong, but watch as that, that low begins to get stronger. That number, the lower the number, the stronger the low pressure, all right? So we'll stop this Sunday evening. This is just after dinner time. You've got snow starting to move through PA. This is light to moderate, sometimes heavy though, down into southeastern PA though. Uh, northern Virginia, uh, sorry, northern New Jersey and then southern New York State all seeing snowfall, but this is not heavy yet. Snow is very close to New York City, but it's just it's it's not the the GFS is saying that it's not cold enough. We'll click for sounding because I want to show you guys this. All right. 37 degrees all right 37 degrees um the dew points are right they're hugging that temperature all right um so all that you need is you just need this temperature to go down below 32 degrees and i think that's where you would get the snowfall all right um but if you're at 37 degrees it's just it's not cold enough for snow but yeah you are inside that cold front all right the cold air is starting to retreat it's not as strong look at this blocking here if this blocking was stronger i think that we would have seen more snow farther south because that would just that would just allow for more stable cold air and uh that would allow those temperatures to drop ahead of the system all right but here it comes in we're getting saturday into sunday the slow is now moving off the coast um and here's that snow it's moving north of the city long island 
now this is just kind of it's not getting any stronger or more significant it's just kind of spacing out a little bit but because this is going to get so much bigger and this could get heavier um you know and that the fact that it'll be snowing in some areas for you know half a day to a day straight that's why we can see so many uh inches of snow but here it comes it's snowing as far east as western massachusetts into all of connecticut and eventually rhode island all right, but northern New Jersey into upstate New York, and then eventually northern PA is still seeing that snowfall. All right, um, and here we go. Notice how on the backside, though, we saw that piece of energy that the GFS was trying to attach to. Um, that was uh, about two days ago I saw that, so that would be uh, Monday we were talking about that. Well, it's looking like the GFS is still in favor of that, and this is only 66 hours out, guys. This is We're talking about the weekend here, so we can definitely get into specifics. So we're going to say that this will happen. And if we see this backside precipitation mixing with that cold air, because remember, this cold air, that's that 32-degree line. The cold air at this point, the cold front is way, the, all this precipitation is way behind that cold front. This could definitely have enough time to change all over to snow, and all these areas are going to get hit again. But this is getting a, as this is becoming a very big system here. Um, and we're getting later into Sunday. This is Sunday Sunday morning. You're waking up to snow. Really, everybody in the interior northeast, and if you're in coastal New England, not southern New England, but if you're in coastal New England, northern New England, you'll be waking up to snow Sunday morning. All right, here comes Sunday afternoon, and notice how things change very uh, differently here. Just very, it's, things get very different, basically is what I'm trying to say. We start to see that cold air really start to mix in with that precipitation. We find ourselves stuck in a big band of very heavy snow, and that would impact Long Island and New York City. At this point, you're changing the snowfall for the rest of southern New England because your cold, your warm air is starting to shift off to the ocean. That cold air is diving down behind this. So now everybody is going to see snow. This is that chance for New York City, that backside snow. This is the GFS has been screaming this. All day today, yesterday, and then you know on Monday, it's just been, it's been, it's been talking about this a lot. All right, and this is moving through Boston here. This is bringing a lot of snow into Boston. This would be areas around Boston, specifically south of Boston, and then close to Martha's Vineyard, Nun and Nantucket, and then also Cape Cod. I think the heavy snow might eventually move through your area because you could see these the deeper, the darker colors signify heavier snow. And I think the darker colors here, they they show up, you know, all the way until Monday. All right, so this is taken until Sunday night to a or Sunday night, and then we finally start to see the heavy snow impact some areas, and this is going to be the coast of Massachusetts. So scratch that what I said about Monday. By Monday, so this is what this is Sunday into Monday. That backside piece of energy. Um, well, it's kind of going to fall apart. We definitely see a big extension with the system, but this backside piece of energy is kind of, it's going to, you know, it might form an upper level low. That would bring more snow, all right? But I don't think it's going to do that, and it's just going to kind of fall apart before that monster system comes up, which we'll talk about later in the video. All right, that was the GFS. What about the European model? All right, so we'll go through the European model real quick. I just don't want to make this video too long because yesterday's video was very long all right um i'm gonna try and make this a little bit shorter so here we go we're getting this is saturday uh afternoon i believe so maybe late afternoon or so all right and we got uh freezing rain all freezing rain moving into virginia you've got snow mixing with sleet and freezing rain into west virginia and you got snow into ohio i think that we're pretty much right around the same uh story that the gfs was talking about but notice how the European model wants us to change to heavy snow much earlier than the GFS. All right. So we don't really see any difference in the position of that low pressure or where the cold air is. All right. Um, but it's definitely in place. Well, you know, we can definitely see um, the temperatures will be getting down well into the 30s, but some areas could be as low as in the upper 20s. That would definitely support big time snowfall. But here it comes and it's snowing very hard now into northern uh, uh, Northern Virginia, that's what we saw on the GFS. It's snowing hard into the mountains of West Virginia, and then Southern PA now starting to see those first flakes. All right, but that's just going to get heavier, and here we go. All right, 
Notice how the European model is really hyping this up for Southern PA. It's been doing that a lot, and it's doing it again tonight, um, but it's showing just a... I mean, this is looking horrifying. This nasty ball of wintry mix precipitation uh, moving through West Virginia and then eventually uh, into northern Maryland. Guys, that is... That's going to bring those ice concerns up high, and then we'll look at the uh, ice accumulation totals. But, man, that looks nasty. And there's that 32-degree line showing up where that sleet is. Uh, that's signified on that purple. And it's actually stretching from New York City and really midway through Long Island down all the way to this area. All right. So the European model is in support of Sunday. This is Saturday into Sunday, so the middle of the night that this system will arrive to New York City and Long Island as sleet, meaning that we're going to see either very wet snow or we're going to see kind of just, you know, rain mixed with snow, kind of a slushy precipitation. All right, that's going to most likely on the Europe, on the European model, it's most likely going to continue down to Northern Virginia, but also we see um, areas near Philadelphia become impacted by that same precipitation as well. You're starting to see more widespread snow into eastern uh, PA, but a little bit farther north, the hills of northern uh, New Jersey starting to see the heavier snowfall and snow is arriving into southern New York State. All right, now we get to early Sunday morning. Our, uh, yes, this is early Sunday morning. And now that line of that line of sleet, it's starting to break up a little bit, but it's very heavy right now. And this would be very heavy sleet for eastern Long Island and all through the southern New England coastline, but if you're just far enough north, the European model is bringing this low a little bit farther south than it did yesterday, and it's actually bringing heavy snow into northern Long Island. That is something to watch, guys, because this, this low still could be positioned a little bit farther south. So let's say it's just a little bit farther south, all right? And so it's about that distance long, all right? We bring the snowfall, the snowfall down there. That brings all this heavy snowfall into New York City, and that's where you get a big winter storm for New York City. So things could change. If that low pressure is just a little bit farther south, that's where we could get heavier snow in much different places, all right? But this is early Sunday morning, all right? And you've got heavy, very heavy snow into so far southern New York State. This is all of Connecticut, Rhode Island, really all of Massachusetts, but down towards um, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and Cape Cod. We're starting out as that sl slushy kind of sleet, uh, but northern, uh, sorry, keep saying northern Virginia, northern New Jersey, and eventually into um, east, uh, keep saying eventually as well, eastern PA. Um, that's where we have the, the moderate to heavy snowfall still persisting, and then we get to about, this is about Sunday afternoon, so late morning to afternoon. This is getting bigger, like the GFS was in support of, and so that is definitely some model agreement there. Um, and that's a lot. That's This is showing up as more of what the GFS is saying, and that's good, meaning that we can have more confidence in this forecast. But I think st things still could change, and things probably will change uh, tonight. I think that the European model will tick north once again. I think it might stop after tonight we'll really have to see what's going to happen tonight but if this stays if this low stays south then you know who knows maybe the gfs is going to fall onto the european side and we're actually going to end up seeing snow a lot farther south than we expect all right um but there's that uh sleet line still moving through southern new england you got snow very heavy snow moving into boston um the rest of massachusetts you've got snow still back into pa this is becoming light to moderate snow, uh, northern New Jersey, and then up into upstate New York, um, and then into Maine, uh, Vermont, and New Hampshire. We're starting to see that moderate snowfall move in. All right, now we're getting to Sunday night. This is late Sunday night, and you've got probably the heaviest snow at this point moving through Boston. Um, the rest of southern New England still seeing snowfall, and you know, some of these some of these big bands of snowfall that move just north of New York City and Long Island, I think the European model is showing is in support of some of them spilling into the northern sections of Long Island. Now, if that happens and it's cold enough, especially on the backside, you have a chance for, you know, if, if it lasts, let's say, an hour, you have a chance for maybe two inches of snow. I think that's how heavy it could be. So that's how you could get your uh, snowfall totals on the European model but the GFS is not showing that. 
Um, but here we go. We're getting into now. This is the middle of the night, Sunday to Monday, and we're finally seeing the storm pull out. But this is still bringing snow into Maine, still bringing snow into the coast of uh, Massachusetts. And then on the backside, you have some leftover energy like the GFS was showing. All right. Um, and then it finally moves out with cold air in place. All right. So now we talk about snowfall totals. And let's wait for this load. Here we go. GFS. All right. It's looking different. These heavier snowfall totals, like I said, they have shifted off to the east into uh, the coast of Massachusetts. We saw where I pointed out maybe the heaviest snow of the entire system would be for the Boston area. Well, here it is on the GFS. GFS is in support of, you know, a little bit under, you know, just a few inches under two feet of snow for this entire coastline. And then even on the northern side of uh, Cape Cod, you could definitely be dealing with up to 18, maybe 20 inches of snow. So a banger of a winter storm for southeastern uh, southeastern Connecticut um, into Rhode Island here and then into southeastern Massachusetts. I think that this could change because notice how this is on the coast. I think the coastal regions are going to see less snow because that low is going to be track this low could is going to be tracking like like this the european model was showing this low tracking like this and the gfs is having it in the same area and so if this is moving up like that and then the warm air is going to be moving up like this then you would have to erase all this heavy snow south of this line because you would be inside that warm sector all right so i think the gfs is a little bit wonky tonight all right, for those areas farther south, but it's showing that big winter storm for the coast of Massachusetts, but I definitely still think I have a big gut feeling that Boston's going to see a lot of snow, and even farther south than Boston. I'm not saying you're not going to see the snow here. It's getting pretty late for this to change completely, but I do think that this is a little bit overhyped, but if you're in the Boston area, be prepared for a foot of snow. All right, and then back into Connecticut and the rest of Massachusetts, we're talking about up to 12 which inches, which would be a foot, and then down farther south in the southeastern uh, Connecticut, we see over a foot of snow. All right, southern New York State, we'll talk about New York City and Long Island. Um, for southern New York State, we're talking about 8 to 10 inches of snow, some higher amounts possible, meaning maybe 11 inches, but right around 9 inches of snow is what you could expect. New York City, current forecast on the GFS right now, it's very sharp. Uh, there's some, you know, some of these islands could see different, some of the New York City islands could see different totals here, but right now the GFS is currently predicting five inches of snow for New York City, all right, um, but look at northern New Jersey, you've got nine inches knocking on New York City's door, that's very close, and that could change tomorrow, that could change overnight tonight, um, into Long Island, we're talking about maybe a little bit over five inches on the GFS, so we're talking about for northern Long Island, this is actually, I'm centered actually right over my area it looks about four to six inches of snow all right so these totals have started to rise and some you know some of the models have been starting to tick farther south interesting to see that all right um into eastern pa all right this is north of philadelphia all right we're talking about 10 inches in this purple shade we're talking about six plus inches into philadelphia probably two to four inches maybe five inches at max all right um into northern uh, Northern Maryland. All right. Um, so we see that yesterday the GFS was putting higher snowfall totals farther west. Well, it's actually putting them farther east today. And so now we see six to eight inches of snow into Northern Maryland. Then into Virginia, and we'll start with West Virginia. All right. Here's West Virginia. We're still talking about around a foot of snow. All right, um, and these are for those upper elevations, but into Virginia, it's really not looking like that big of a winter storm. We still have those winter storm watches in the area, all right, but it's only, the GFS is only supportive up to five inches of snow in any part of Virginia. So, I mean, things have changed a lot on the GFS, and it's looking like the higher totals are actually going to be in the in the uh, far northeast, like into New England. I think that's where we're going to see the highest totals i think it's going to be right into there and you know if you look at a few days ago we saw the gfs was in support of like two feet of snow in this area that has changed completely all right i don't think anybody at this point in g on the gfs i don't think anybody's going to see a foot of snow into 
uh, at least west and central PA. Um, but even into eastern PA, we still don't see anybody getting really over 10 inches of snow. All right, so that was the GFS. We'll so I'll quickly look at here in, into southern New Hampshire and Vermont. We can actually see uh, maybe up to seven or so inches of snow. All right, um, into uh, southern New Hampshire in uh, Vermont, uh, maybe just a, under a foot of snow. Um, but it looks like similar totals to areas, you know, areas into western Massachusetts. All right, um, and then and it's a tiny uh, pocket of extreme southern Maine. We could be talking about, you know, 8 to 10 inches of snow or so. All right, so we switch this over to the European model. What does the European show? Well, it shows kind of similar, but it's farther south, all right? So once again, the European model has been ticking farther south today, and we saw that low pressure positioned farther south, all right? So that warm that warm air... It's going to be like that. That low pressure moves up like this. All right. Now you've got cold air in this entire region leading to widespread snowfall. I think that the European model is starting to hype this up a little bit more, like the GFS. All right. Um, we can see a lot more areas getting a foot on the European model than we saw just a few days ago. All right. We'll start this out into Boston here. This is the Boston area, seeing 8 to 10 inches of snow on the European model. Everybody else in, in uh, Massachusetts seeing really the same amount of snow, so really around 8 to 10 with some higher amounts possible. But down in the southeastern of Massachusetts, that's where we can see a foot, maybe a little bit more. All right, we're going for about a foot into uh, Rhode Island. Now into Connecticut, maybe the hot, maybe this could this could be the winner into Connecticut. Connecticut but could be the winning state here, seeing the most snow, uh, just based off of the European model. All right, um, but we can see into central Connecticut, 15 inches of snow on the south shore of Connecticut. It's maybe you know just over a foot of snow is possible in this red shade. All right, northern New Jersey. Same, same, uh, same totals as the GFS, maybe an inch or so higher, but we see that same, you know, uh, purple shade showing up there. That is about 10 inches of snow. And then just to the northwest of there, look at this, 15 inches once again, but now this is into eastern PA. All right, moving up into southern New York State. All right, now southern New York State, seeing about 8 to 10 inches of snow, but this tiny red shade here. That's where we can see up to a foot of snow. New York City and southern New England. Here we go. New York City, seven inches of snow. That's a two-inch difference on a two-inch difference on the European and the GFS. All right. So you know we're definitely starting to see a bigger signal for maybe a couple inches more of if you know so in New York City um, and Long Island than we saw yesterday. All right. There's still a handful of models that are still predicting an all-rain event for New York City. I would not put my money on seeing seven inches of snow in New York City. I think this will change, but this is the latest European model. Once again, snow, or sorry, time is running out, all right? But if you go into Long Island as well, European is in favor of nine inches of snow in northern Long Island, all right? This would be a big one for Long Island, 10 inches of snow somewhere here near the um, northern Long Island, but... Even on the South Shore, we're talking about, you know, five inches plus, all right? So that's a big difference on the GFS and the European model, just based off where the position of the low is, but in the Central and Western PA, uh, anywhere from one to like, you know, five, six, maybe seven inches of snow is possible. Now down through Southern PA and then in, into Maryland and then eventually uh, between Virginia and West Virginia, this entire area, six to eight inches is what you could expect in that purple shade surrounding areas, seeing just a few inches under that, which would be really uh, four to five inches of snow. All right, for southern Vermont, New Hampshire, and southern Maine, about, you know, five to seven inches of snow, so that's still a substantial winter storm, but I think the GFS wants more snow in this area. It's, it's really hyping up the snow in this area. The European model is also doing that. All right, um, but the GFS does not want nearly as much snow in this area um, than the European is. So that's some big model disagreement. Still, we're only like two, we're like two, one and a half, two days away from the system, and we still have giant model agreement. So or disagreement. So you know, this just this is just going to be a very tough forecast. And so I'm hoping I can get this right for you guys. Um, and so. 
it's going to bring us to our next part of the update. This is really our final part of the update, but we still have different sections here. We're, we're going to be talking about that second system now, all right? So there's going to be a big trough coming in from the west, and behind it, quickly behind the system, things are going to pick up. So looking at what's going to be happening in the central U.S., that's what my our main focus is. We'll start in the west, actually. You got a big system coming out of the Pacific Northwest. That is the same exact one that's going to be bringing that system. You got high pressure that's weakening there into Colorado. That's going to be leaving the area because of this low pressure, right? But notice this big giant dip in the jet stream. We got that ridge because of that low pressure, but this cold air that's diving down behind it will quickly fill in uh, where that ridge was. But you see plenty of cold air being able to move down into the northern U U.S., and that's going to set the stage for um, a big snowstorm if we can get a dynamic system. And the answer to that question is yes, we are definitely going to get a big system. We already know this is going to happen. All right, but the latest GFS brings us through the southern U.S. This is looking like a bowling ball trough here. And then here it comes by this. It's just crazy how quickly this develops. We start to see a lot of snow starting to form on the back side of the system with a 999 millibar low right in between Texas and New Mexico. But you've got a lot of snowfall on the back side going up all the way up towards Nebraska, all the way down through New Mexico. This is 7 a.m. on January 8th, which would be uh, Monday. Yes, this, this would be so Monday. In, uh, Monday morning, all right, um, and now we're taking this out to uh, just after dinner time on Monday. This is 7 p.m. Monday, and look at this. you got an all-out winter storm into, you know, in into South Dakota, the Midwest, and then all the way down through northern Texas. You're seeing very heavy snow, and some wintry conditions start to form, and you start to see a lot of rain on the southern side. No signs of severe weather yet, all right, but this will definitely ramp up. It's just a matter of you know when the upper the upper air uh the upper levels in the atmosphere begins to shaken up that's where we start to see the severe weather component and here we go all right you've got cold air diving and mixing in behind the system changing as much precipitation as it can back to snowfall and just look how far south this is getting guys this is very far south and when you see a cold blast this far south with those isobars which are those little black lines very close together you're going to get strong winds coming out of the north here. And I think that into, you know, Oklahoma and Texas, if you see winds coming out of the north, uh, you know, at 35, 45 miles per hour, maybe 50 miles per hour, all right, those gusts, you could be dealing with blizzard conditions because you're going to have the heavy snowfall. And that's going to reduce visibility big time. So we got to talk about that. Um, you know, once we get through the forecast for that first system, all right? Um, but here it comes. It's a 985 millibar low riding through the southeast. You've got big, uh, you know, severe weather event moving in, all right? Um, and you've got cold air starting to retreat on the north side in front of the system because that ridge is just going to be ridiculously strong. But, I mean, look at this cold air coming out. It's just, it's crazy. And you can even see... You know these these isobars are wrapping into the system. That's the those are basically those winds. This is the wind stream. It's moving around that low pressure. So I think that if you see this the the snow this heavy into Oklahoma, you will have blizzard conditions. All right, but this low continues to get stronger. And this is Tuesday. This is probably going to be the most active hour of the system for the eastern U.S. We'll switch this to the eastern U.S. so we can get a closer look at things. All right. So this is on uh, Tuesday. Um, this is the middle of the day Tuesday. You've got severe weather. Uh, this is rolling right through the south, the deep south. You've got very heavy snow into uh, central uh, Missouri and then into northern Arkansas. This is probably, I mean, this is very far south, but we could have an all-out winter storm, maybe even a blizzard for Arkansas. Who's heard of a blizzard in Arkansas? I mean, but this is getting to the short term, so... We could actually have to be talking about this, and, you know, I don't think we're going to be joking around with this. We can't be joking around th with this. This is going to be such an impactful and big system that we have to get, you know, we have to get started with this forecast because if people are not prepared in this region, all right, of the United States, bad things are going to happen, and we got to really just make sure that everybody knows what's going to happen. But we see... Extremely heavy snow on the backside, moving now into uh, northern uh, and western portions of 
uh, Illinois. This would be a heavy band of snow moving just to the north of St. Louis, um, but we see a lot of very heavy snow in Missouri. All right, more severe weather continues in the Deep South. All right, um, the GFS yesterday and in past days has been showing more of a winter storm situation for the Northeast. Now it's getting rid of that just because of this ridge being so tall. I mean, when you have such a big cold blast coming down, you may be thinking, like, there's much, there must be widespread cold air in this area. But the moisture supply, guys, the moisture return after that system is going to be huge. These winds up the East Coast are going to be downright ripping um, once we get into the 10th, which is going to be Wednesday. All right. I think we could be dealing with maybe the worst damaging wind event uh, of the winter coming up. I don't want to scare you guys, but these winds are just going to be so strong. Uh, I mean, we're, 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 I think we're a little far out to talk about, you know, official wind gusts for sure. All right. Um, but, you know, we're talking about 60 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts at, at their max. And, I mean, this is really going to be a crazy event. But we're seeing a total washout on the East Coast. Interior portions of the Northeast could see some snow. But it's just because of that warm sector in that ridge is going to be so tall with so much moisture in the atmosphere. It, it's pretty much impossible for this to turn over to snow unless on the backside, you know, you're you're mixing with the cold, dry air. That's where you could get the snowfall. Other than that, it's just going to be an all rain event and a total washout. But that takes until Thursday. We get to Thursday morning and this finally is moving out. But that is a massive system that's very dynamic. That's a negatively tilted trough right there um, in just uh, just a very impactful system here on the GFS. All right. So severe weather. All right. We got to talk about it. Um, so yesterday we saw how the uh, SBC issued a day six um, or they issued a day seven uh, um, slight risk for severe weather. Well, this has been we're getting closer to that time frame, so this is now we're up to day five with this. Yesterday, just after I fi- it was this was literally just after I finished making my up uh, the video I did yesterday, they issued a f- another slight risk for the day after day five, um, and this is now including areas of Florida and Georgia. We'll talk about the day five area first. This is that day one risk for when the when the event happens. All right, so a fifteen percent risk. Um, you know, after day uh, three is, which is day four to eight, um, that is a slight risk. All right. So once we get to the day three with this, uh, w- with this 15% risk, this will be, uh, no, uh, this will be seen as a slight risk. That's a level two out of five risk. If I were to g- give you guys my bid on, you know, how, what level of severe weather do you think I'm going to get up? We're going to get up to, I think we're going to get it to an enhanced risk which is a level 3 out of 5, but I don't think that a level 4 to 5 moderate risk is out of the picture. I don't want to scare you guys. I don't want to talk about this too early, but that 15% risk is still there. hasn't changed. Uh, it's in the eastern Texas here. We can see Lufkin and Houston, Texas, big populated areas in that risk. This moves through the Gulf Coast of Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. So now I have Alexandria and New Orleans um, in Louisiana included in that risk. All right, no major cities in Mississippi, thank goodness. All right, uh, we got Mobile, Alabama, right on that risk area. And then into the far uh, western um, Florida, just, just off to the west of Tallahassee, that's where we have um, that 15% risk. All right, day six, this is the new slight risk that was issued yesterday. All right, and here it is. It's into northern Florida. you got big-time city. I mean, this is Tampa, Orlando. Uh, you've got Tallahassee, Jacksonville. I mean, that's already millions of people. You got 12 million people in that risk. But you got St. Petersburg, you know, just some big areas. All right. But in Georgia, you can see uh, you got Savannah, and and then also in the very far extreme Southern South Carolina, maybe not even. Um, we we have that extended 15% risk, um, and then into uh, southeastern um, portions of Alabama. Um, this is actually including uh, uh, Dothan or Dauphin. Um, please correct me in the comments if you do know how to pronounce that. Um, that is right in uh, just you know in the middle of that um, risk. Um, if you were to be talking about um, just the part that would be including Alabama, but for the center of this entire area, 
it's going to be the, the, the Jacksonville area in the Florida. I think that's the area that could maybe be the bullseye. Um, this would be for Tuesday into Wednesday, day five, which is this first day, um, which I think is probably going to be the more active day. It's going to be Monday into Tuesday. All right. So now we've seen what the risk for severe weather is. Now, why do we see the severe weather? Well, first of all, we want to talk about the dew points. We looked at this yesterday. This is not going to change. I just want to make sure that, you know, for the people that haven't seen my video yesterday, but are watching right now. I want to show you guys, just in case you missed it, you know, because you missed it yesterday, why we're seeing the severe weather. All right, notice how you have this big surge of dew, po of dew points, and basically, which is moisture, coming up. And this has just been climbing higher and farther north. And the higher, the farther north it goes, the, the stronger the moisture supply is. And what, when you see above average dew points, you're talking about, you know, above 50, all right? I, well, I would say above 55, but we should be pretty dry at the most part, dur especially during this time of the year. Because if you look, if you notice, if you look at everybody else in the United States, nobody else is getting near 40 for your dew points. People are below zero uh, degrees for your dew points. That is just very dry air because it's so cold. All right. Um, but notice how in the deep south, there's that push of moisture coming up from the Gulf. The Gulf is just so hot right now. This is why that's happening. But you can see going to eastern Texas, Louisiana, the same exact area in this green, and especially in that blue. That's that same area of that 15% risk where we see the highest dew points. But we could see 50s and 40s getting as far north as, you know, uh, um, Kentucky and into Tennessee. If I were to draw an area where I think, you know, we would see thunderstorms or a chance for severe thunderstorms, if I were to draw an area, I think we could see thunderstorms in this entire region. I think this entire region could be under the gun for severe weather. If you're farther north into the northeast, you may be wondering why the heck are you circling me after we see, like, a foot of snowfall. Well, that's just because you wait and see, you know, how far north and how strong that moisture supply is. Um, and that upper-level jet's going to be ripping as well, all right? Um, but here it comes into Florida, and this is why we see such a big risk for severe weather in Florida, because look at these dew points. We're in the upper 60s. That is so much to support big-time thunderstorms. Same thing into Georgia, into South Carolina. I would not be surprised if that 15% uh, risk was extended into the Carolinas by tomorrow, maybe even as soon as tonight. But when I talk about the Northeast, well, I'm including you guys for a reason, because we're getting... Uh, into the fifth, well into the fifties for all of uh, New England here, and even into the interior Northeast, but up the coastline in general, it's pull this storm system is so strong, and it, those winds are just so strong that they're pulling up all that moisture from the uh, Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean at the same time. That is going to that's just going to supply the system with tons and tons of moisture. All right, so now we've talked about the moisture. We've got the moisture. What about the uh, jet stream wind speeds here? These are your winds up in the atmosphere. Well, here's that trough coming through. You can see it's positively tilted at this point, uh, meaning that it's not tailing off to the south like we see um, a dy those dynamic systems when they move in. We see the low like that. All right, we get a tail of uh, most likely, you, you most usually thunderstorms um, off to the south. All right, so here it's moving in. And you've got, you know, you got winds getting up to around 100 miles per hour up in the atmosphere. That's very strong. Mixing with the kinematics, mixing with the amount of moisture is just so perfect for severe thunderstorms. That's why the forecasters at the Storm Prediction Center have such high confidence that we're going to see a severe weather event. But, I mean, this lower level jet is, uh, or this mid level jet really, is just ripping out into Texas. I mean, look at this. We're seeing way over well over 100 mile per hour winds up in the atmosphere we're getting around like 90 knots all right which is you know getting up pretty high into the 90s if you convert that to miles per hour but here's that low pressure center this is wrapping this is shooting up um just to in front of that low pressure center it's these winds are mo moving very quickly up in the atmosphere if you notice actually this would be interesting if you look at the clouds um, before it gets very cloudy because the storms are rolling in the southeast. If you look at those clouds in, like, Texas um, into eastern Texas, all right, they're going to be moving so fast. You probably haven't seen clouds move that fast before. That's just because of the, how fast those winds are going to be blowing up in the atmosphere. But this continues to move, 
you know, even quicker. I mean, the Tuesday, I mean, in, in Arkansas, I mean, look how, you know, just how strong that is, right? And this is p- pressing up right up against that low pressure center. That low pressure center is right there. That is going to call for, I think we're going to see a tornado threat in this area, all right? I think we definitely will see a tornado threat in this area. It's going to be um, into northern Texas. This is northeastern Texas, and I think in the uh, western Arkansas, I think we're going to see a major tornado threat Tuesday night, all right, um, or Tuesday morning into afternoon. Tuesday afternoon, this I think this this um, uh, the tornado threat and the severe threat will actually be shifted farther north. So therefore, I think they should the storm prediction center should extend their slight risk farther north. That's what I would say. But um, this finally becomes negatively tilted, but it takes a long time for that to become fully negatively tilted. It's still got kind of got a positive look to it. Even, you know, back into Tuesday, but we're getting to Wednesday, and this is moving up into the northeast. And you see how that moisture supply is so large? Well, this is why I show it. Look, I mean, this is these, this lower level, this mid level jet, it's getting even stronger in, up into the Carolinas and then eventually in the northeast. This would be a damaging wind gust line if you, would, you, were, you were to get any form of severe weather. All right. Um, but if the kinematics line up with the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, like, models have been supporting we could be dealing with a big severe weather event and i think we could be dealing with severe weather outbreak um potentially sometime tuesday or wednesday all right of next week so uh for the last part of the update we look at snowfall totals on this system this is the gfs model here we saw the blizzard conditions potentially back into oklahoma into uh, arkansas and then eventually into uh, missouri and uh illinois there's that signal for it, and it's screaming, all right, especially into uh, south central um, south central Missouri, where we can actually see, I'm not sure if I said Missouri, um, but we can actually see these dark greens. We're getting to two feet of snow. That is a lot of snow, guys, and this is going into northern uh, Illinois and then western Illinois. We're seeing well above a foot of snow, and then there's some pink shades just under about, you know, 10, 11 inches of snow. That's a lot of snow. And then into northeastern, or sorry, northwestern Arkansas, the scenario I'm watching, there's a signal for a foot of snow. If you're in extreme northwestern Arkansas, that seems a little ridiculous. But, you know, look where, where, if you look at how far out we are, you know, based off of where this blue line goes, we're in the short to medium term. I don't think this is midway through this run. All right, so time is running out for this to change. Um, And so if we hang on to the signal for long enough, we could actually end up with, you know, substantial snowfall totals in Arkansas. And that would catch people off guard because nobody out there is going to expect that much snow. But into the Midwest and into the Great Lakes region, we can see similar totals of 10, maybe 10 plus inches of snow. So there's a big signal for a big winter storm I don't think it's going to be a, I think if I were to give you, you know, if I were to tell you what, uh, you know, what form of precipitation is going to take over the uh, biggest portion of the system, it's probably going to be rainfall, but there's still going to be a lot of areas that are going to see some, you know, big winter storm conditions and maybe even blizzard conditions. All right. So that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for coming to watch. We'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. More updates on the way as always. All right. We'll continue watching the signal for snow um, on this system. Uh, Tomorrow, we'll definitely check out where that low pressure is going to be forecasted on the European and the GFS. I'll probably be able to get an update in for you guys tomorrow because tomorrow's Friday, so I won't have any schoolwork to worry about, all right? Um, So I'll probably see you guys back here tomorrow night, and we'll we'll basically be doing the same exact thing that we're doing today. Another severe weather breakdown, another snowstorm breakdown, and uh, we'll just get things figured out. So thank you all for coming to watch this video, and I'll see you guys next update.